Okay, this episode was fire. You ruined my life! Sorry, I just couldn't resist. All right, gang, it's been a hot second, but Hell of a Boss is finally back and giving us that long overdue meeting of Fizz and Blitz. With some shipping reveals that yours truly called way back, and a nice emotional resolution for Blitz's past that nearly made me cry, yet somehow my brain still found a way to nitpick. This episode was truly solid. It's the most comfortable with itself that Hell of a Boss has felt in a l well, this entire season. And while I may have my gripes about it not fully living up to its potential and kind of rushing the whole Blitz and Fizz situation, Ozzy and Fizz are cute as fuck, and they make up for almost all of it. So let's break down this episode in another wonderful edition of us discussing Hell of a Boss. Well, you're pretty good at squeezing things in. So, full disclosure, this episode was basically tailor-made for me to love it. I am biased as hell, as this episode reveals that Ozzy and Fizz really are Stolitz, but better. Having the same aesthetic as Blitz and Stolitz, of an dating a horny rich bird guy, but they have none of the emotional baggage that makes Stolitz such a shit show. Not to mention the episode pretty much took all my headcanon slash analysis videos I've done, and pretty much say all of it as Blitz and Fizz discuss the dysfunctional shit that we have been gushing over for this entire time. And and there's just a level of gratification there of being right that I cannot describe. But even with all that said, I do think this episode could have been better in some ways. But before I get petty, let's break down what I liked. Uh -oh, again with the horn. Starting with the obvious, as we get a glimpse at Fizz and Ozzy's morning routine with the two of them getting toxically cute together. With Fizz working as Ozzy's lover and personal assistant, these two are just getting each other ready for the day, as while Fizz makes a schedule, Oz plans to make them breakfast, as the only thing more burnt than Fizz's body was his cooking. Try to stay out of trouble, Fizzy Frog. Ah, stop it! No. <laughs> I really do enjoy watching these two just be like an actual loving couple. It's neat to see what Stolz and Blitz could be if they just, I don't know, communicated for once in their life. Ozzy and Fizz know what they want, they tell each other that, and they are all the better for it. Even though they do have to fail at keeping this on the DL, as a sin of lust being in a romantic, healthy relationship would be antithetical to his brand. Especially after all the shit he gave Moxie about singing a sincere love song at his club. We got a saying that's popular in these pods. Only little bitches strum the strings in their hearts. Just come right back when it's over and keep your phone on you, okay? Like they said a lot of shit, and they are both fat hypocrites for it, as they're into each other for more than just booty. They are fussing over each other constantly proving how this extends just far beyond lust into genuine romantic feelings. But all good things must come to an end, and Fizz goes off to Greed to get some cash in a rehearsal for a concert. This worries Ozzy for kind of legitimate reasons, but on the wrong side of the tracks, Fizz runs into his former best friend and everything goes downhill from there, as they aren't the only baddies in the neighborhood. Now this might annoy some people, but I actually kind of like having Stryker and Krim in this episode. Primarily because it finally puts the two of them at the level I think they were always meant to be at. As if you can fault Hell of a Boss with anything, and there are faults, is that it does too good of a job at introducing its villains. All of these guys always feel like they are set to be these big threats that impacts to contend with eventually. They aren't just some villains of the week, but actual menaces who can threaten our heroes emotionally as well as physically. From Krim being Moxie's father and the killer of his mother, to Striker being this dark reflection of Blitz and all that he could have been if he gave in to his resentment. The show is really good at hyping us up for these guys to eventually come back, to bring the tension and to set the show apart from its usual gag self. Which causes problems when they come back and they're kind of just not nearly as hype as they were originally. But having Krim and Striker here kind of just solidifies their role in the story to me as being members of a larger villain cast rather than being one of the bigger antagonists that everyone has to take a little bit more seriously. They're dangerous, they're the bad guys, but they're not that big nemesis that these guys really have to worry about. They're not going to automatically make the whole scene darker for just being there, despite how much emphasis their initial episodes give them. They are much closer to being the villains of the week than the final boss. So them just being here and causing trouble really does solidify to the audience what we can expect from them, that they can just be an antagonist of an episode not directly tied to Imp in the business, which helps set audience expectations and so that we don't expect too much. And I also do think that Stryker kind of needs to be here, as without him, we just have Crimson's goons. 
who will die in the thousands before we ever start to feel any actual threat. So Stryker being here explains why Fizz and Blitz were captured in the first place, gives us just that little hint of danger about why Blitz can't just kill everybody, as he actually has to work to beat this guy. With Stryker being able to bring the menace just a little bit, when his resentment leads him to try and off Fizz as some petty revenge against Blitz constantly getting in his way. Is it bad that I'm getting hard? Shut the fuck up! Why is it always a sex thing? And he also works as just giving this third perspective to Blitz and Fizz's relationship, as these two are both shacking up with the upper class. But at least Loudmouth here has the sense to only fuck his rich bitch, instead of being a little purse dog. The man is a hater, but they all run a spectrum of what they think of the nobility, and how most of what the other guys are saying are kinda bold. Bullshit, with Fizz representing how a healthy, normal relationship can form between an imp and an upper demon. And again, I love the whole conversation between Fizz and Blitz about where they are romantically. As the two of them are trading barbs, they are trying to talk shit. But through it all, Blitz fully vocalized what we've kind of figured out this whole time. That he doesn't believe that Stolas loves him, and how despite all evidence to the contrary, he thinks that Stolas is only into him for the thrill of getting dicked down by the lower class. A misunderstanding that Stolas fed into unintentionally with his actions, but even for someone who has seen as little of them as Fizz, he's able to figure out that this isn't just some act Stolas is putting on. But Blitz, being so filled with self-hatred, he refuses to just have hope that they could be more. As Fizz sarcastically jokes that Stolas laughing at his jokes is proof that they must be an act. Only for Blitz to take that statement at face value as it feeds into the narrative of failure he's already built into his head. Laugh at my jokes. Oh, well that's definitely your clue right there that it's all bullshit. I know, right? Yeah. Fizz can see it. Blitz refuses to let himself believe it. Throughout the episode though, I really come to love Fizz as a character. It's really funny to watch him freak out in the middle of a fight. As for all his skills as an entertainer, he's actually a bit of a cow with no idea how to fight. In contrast to the Terminator robot version of himself that gave Blitz a run for his money, Fizz is kind of a house cat to Blitz's mangy stray. Fizz is unprepared to deal with any of these situations, while for Blitz, it's as natural as breathing. The man lives for conflict. This creates a fun dynamic where we get to see the two highlight their strengths and making Fizz way more interesting than just being another badass dark reflection of Blitz that Stryker is. <laughs> Works. This episode is filled with tons of fun violence, especially when the two of them start working together as they leverage Blitz's killing skills with Fizz's mobility, showing off how grave a pair the two of them could have been if life hadn't gotten in the way. The comedy for this episode also pretty much on point for most of it. The denial of Fizzy, the smash cut to Fizz not keeping a low profile, the genuine sass is all just perfect. Oh, don't you dare talk sexy to me. You're still on the horse thing? There are some moments where I think they could have spent a little bit less time on a joke. The kaiju cockpit could have been cut in half and would have been just as funny. And also, I know it plays into the bit, but Fizz's song... I can't lie, I was thinking that they could wrap this shit up sooner too. On its own though, this episode is mostly able to avoid the worst of the pacing and tonal issues that have been plaguing this season. The tone feels way more consistent, as rather than having like genuine danger, oh we need to be worried, this is just having fun, it just needs to have tension. It's never begging us to take what's going on super seriously like Stolz nearly getting murdered. Instead, it's able to get away with the jokes and cutaway gags to the bird boys arguing over a contract. As while the situation in shootout is tense, the real drama and focus is all on Fizz and Blitz's relationship, what happened to them, and them making amends. Which is where my nitpicky ass brain starts to kick in. As I like these scenes, but something feels a little off to me. So let me explain. Would it fuck up the moment if we made out right now? See, for as much as that hug made me almost cry, I couldn't shake this nagging bug at the back of my head whispering that this could have been better. You see, in spite of the script being solid, Rogers and Brightman absolutely destroying it in their roles. I did! These line reads were just so good. I do feel like there's something weird to how this episode is structured and how the conflict is resolved. And that comes from a few different angles. First being, it does feel a little bit too soon for them to be bearing the hatchet like this. The conflict between Fizz and Blitz are something that the story has been hinting at since episode 2, where Blitz ignores protecting Stolas to get into a fight with a robotic version of Fizz, hinting at his past and all of his failures, which triggers a fight that destroys all of Lululand. This is the show telling us just what a big deal Fizz is to Blitz. There's some great drama and mystery tying into Blitz's past. Fizz is tied to his past at the circus, his failure as a performer, and as we would later find out, Fizz even reflects Blitz's relationship to Stolas as Fizz is also dating a royal. The show built up a ton of parallels between the two, with it promising to give us something juicy later down the road. In spite of all that promise, Fizz and Blitz only actually interact a grand total of two times in the entire series, and then their conflict is just resolved. But if we're being honest, that's kind of a lie, as they really only interact in this episode. Twice! 
is already way too much. The scene in Ozzy was super brief with Fizz talking shit to Blitz's face before setting up Verasica to go for the throat. Everything else besides that was either the robot, a hallucination, or a flashback. The two don't get to meaningfully interact until it's pretty much time to clear everything up, and I kind of feel like we're training an interesting dynamic for immediate gratification. I'm not saying that they tease this out over a long period of time. It feels like they just could have really dug into these two and what's going on in their past. How they're former friends who end up being just in radically different places in their lives. Fizz doesn't have to be a villain, but he could be more of a recurring antagonist that Blitz has to deal with. Instead, they just kind of meet and we jump straight to the field. Which isn't bad, I really do love the scene. It just feels a little bit too quick and easy for how much they built up these two over the course of the series. The idea of what happened between them has been hanging over us for a while, and while the episode is solid, me being the greedy drama whore that I am feels like the show might be resolving this just a little too quickly when there's just so much more to explore and tease at. They didn't have to like rectify everything, Fizz didn't need to be some massive villain, but it feels just a little bit too easy that they just meet and everything ends up being solved again. It's revealed that Blitz did cause the explosion that made Fizz, but it was an accident born of shame and not an act of malice and jealousy. We also get the reveal that the real sticking point for Fizz was how he believed that Blitz abandoned him after causing the accident and never visited him when he was recovering. Only for all this to be revealed that it was all a big misunderstanding, which they just accept, rendering 15 years of resentment to be rendered toothless. And I feel like this one scene, the reveals is my biggest issue. As it's literally back-to-back -back reveals of what Fizz thought happened, what really happened, and then they figured out that them thinking that the other abandoned them was all a misunderstanding, as someone told Blitz that Fizz didn't want to see him, while Fizz was told Blitz never showed up. All of this shit happens in I shit you not 90 seconds. 15 years of resentment, 2 years of buildup, and they realize that this is all just a big misunderstanding and an accident. Which is just a little quick and easy for me. After all this implied resentment, all this implied issues that we've seen, how they just refuse to see each other, they kind of just meet and it gets dealt with. They hate each other, hate each other, keep sharing barbs, all the reveals happen and then they're suddenly oh, maybe we're kind of cool. And part of me thinks in my non-writer brain is that maybe there shouldn't have been two moments where they reconciled. As we have the mid-fight flashbacks, then we also have Blitz saving Fizz from the fire. Great fucking moments. The hug was freaking great. I feel like maybe instead of doing everything in that middle fight, maybe they should have just revealed Fizz's perspective to have Blitz try and fail to tell him what's going on, but for Fizz to be too resentful to let him finish, but have them start working together to survive, and we start feeling them get closer together again, then you can have the reveal of what actually happened during the hug, and that they realize that everything that's happened was a miscommunication. So rather than having a rapid series of reveals in a second reconciliation, you can instead maximize the impact of having an already great moment, and just doubling it up, rather than splitting focus with two different scenes. I really still like the moments on their own, again everyone here is killing it with their performances. This is probably the best Hell of a Boss episode this season. I just think that there are some slight tweaks that they might have been able to make to make the story slap just a little bit harder. Also, something that I do question, the episode implies that the fire Blitz started may have also killed his mom or ruined his relationship with his family. You have no idea what I lost in that fire. Which... Fizz grew up with Blitz, he lived at the circus. I feel like he should know if Blitz's mom was there and also died that day. Making the whole line feel like it's more of Blitz just being vague for the audience's sake than Fizz's. Also yes, this is the story of how Blitz got that scar on his face. With the Hellfire explosion being spectacular and the visual of Fizz's charred body being haunting. I especially love how they always cut the explosion with their eyes to convey just this was the last thing they saw before they got hit by the explosion. Which, and just to make this clear, apparently fire on Earth doesn't affect demons but this fire being green makes it something else entirely, and it is possible to burn imps. Also, in a fucked up sort of way, Blitz beat Robot Fizz in the same way he cooked the original. But for all the gripes I have about the, how the show structured the Fizz and Blitz resolution, I do think though that seeing Blitz and Fizz work together and talk about how they've moved past the accident, I think that was really good. For all the absolute body horror that happened to Fizz, he's emotionally mature enough to recognize that he won at life. He's a superstar, he's rich, with a partner that loves and cherishes him. Sure, the explosion that Blitz accidentally caused was life-altering, but Fizz was still able to pick up the pieces of his life afterwards which is a smart way to decompress all the tension the two have been imagining was between them, while also hinting to Blitz what he could have if he just finally talked to Stolz about what he wants in their relationship. Also, I can't not talk about it. Ozzy is... SO JEALOUS! Sin of Lust, and everyone knows exactly what they're doing. 
I was a little bit disappointed when we didn't see Oz go absolutely ape shit when Krim tried to threaten Fizz's life, but him being paired up with Stolas was comedy gold, while also keeping Oz from fixing all the story's problems. Also yeah, I think we can officially drop Crimson's intelligence score by a few, by a lot of points. As it's one thing for Chaz to roll a nat 20 and convince Krim he's rich, but for Krim to blackmail the King of Lust, one of the seven deadly sins, and to show his fucking face in a video call, this man might be a cold-blooded shark, but he's not as sharp as he thinks he is. Which is kind of fitting for a mob boss who's too dumb and poor to get into white-collar crime. <laughs> Overall, I really liked this episode, and I loved everything that it brought to the table. More than just appealing to my personal biases, I think this episode of Hell of a Boss is it at its most comfortable. Sure, there are some areas where I think it could have been improved. I feel like Fizz could have been given a bigger arc here than just forgiving Bliss for what happened. But overall, what it did well, it did really well, even if I do have some nitpicks about how it could have been done better. But after a season filled with great ideas and good moments, but some eh execution, this has been the episode that feels like the most complete version of itself, having jokes, petty nonsense, sends villains and furries, with the heart of the story resting on the unresolved trauma that ruins us when we don't talk about it. This episode revels in everything that Hell of a Boss loves to do, and I personally just can't help but love watching it work. Thank you all for watching, this has been Sarcastic Chorus. Stay tuned and subscribe to be kept up to date on all the metric shit ton of shipping videos I'm gonna make out of this one. As Fizz X Ozzy, I expected that, but I was not ready for Blitz to come out with a love letter and flower for Fizz. That changes a whole lot of things.